good good morning and uh, um, uh, <clears throat> Lord Jiddi Sung Lord Jiddi uh, um, uh, he expressing uh, wrong view within the uh, Dharmic community. Sometimes we can have a wrong view. A wrong view as a not as a same as a who doesn't believe the karma or who doesn't believe the three jewels. People who believe karma and uh, believe three jewels still have a, 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 a wrong view of a believing creating by someone else, like a um, bad way negative way as a when we uh, so we uh, this line when we have a, a hardship in our life you know something goes wrong we always say by blame to someone else so that is called a created by that person so we never um, can say blame or to break he did we never uh, uh, consider our, ourselves as a, ourself as a part of that consequences. You know, uh, we never think as our action is involved. So, so, so that is a one negative way, and a positive way. We we give the critic to the deity. We give the critic to the lama. You know, lama did this to me. Deity did this to me. So it's called the creator, believing in the creator, which, which is not really, uh, uh, you know, Buddhism, because Buddhism cannot be uh, contradictory with the law of causality. So, so, so that reason, uh, there's a, no one can make us, uh, um, basically, no one can make us, um, uh, you know, low realm, reborn in the low realm, or no one else can make us reborn in the higher realm. This is all our involvement or, you know, our uh, um, uh, um, action, which is that bring the result. So um, not only that one, even you look at uh, um, enlightened activities, you know, enlightened activity is a Buddha alone cannot perform the enlightened activities. If you look the in jewel ornament or you look the Pamun was the latest, we, we already went through some of you maybe there, uh, went through the teaching on the uh, stage of the path by Pamun Both said, uh, in Latin, performing the enlightened activity, mid of sentient beings, uh, there's uh, three things involvement. First, uh, aspiration prayer of that Buddha when he was, uh, or he or she was uh, in the uh, Bodhisattva path, make the aspiration prayer. Second, that Buddha's uh, mass of uh, accumulation of merit, two. And third one is it the sentient beings karma or merit. Those three together comes, then enlightened beings can perform the, uh, their enlightened activities, you know, in the, uh, in the samsara. So, so that is a showing as a, without the, our self involvement of anything, we cannot get any kind of result from any, uh, any part of the, uh, you know, practice. So uh, like Buddha himself said, prayer alone, cannot fulfill what you wish. If you want to fulfill that wish, you have to make the kram, a karma, which means the good merit, you know, for main cause of our fulfilling wish is the merit. So that reason, um, so, so that this reason, even the reborn in the pure land of Sukhavati, they have a sudden cause. So what is different between the Sukhavati pure land and other pure land is a rebirth of, of other pure land, like a, or other Buddhist pure land. You must have to realizing 
maybe at, at less like a, a first bhumi or uh, you know you need some degree of a realization um, but uh, Amitabha Pure Land, even the ordinary one can reborn in the Amitabha Pure Land, long as you have those favorable condition and cause and condition. So that way, uh, in this uh, prayer, in the Chame Ragas' uh, prayer to reborn in the Amitabha Sukhavati Pure Land, he explained the four uh, uh, different kind of a, a cause to rebirth in the Abhinav Pure Land. First cause is we already went through, called the uh, remembering the Pure Land and again and again, compre compre comprehensively remembering the Pure Land. So in the Ilaga Vajayana, we're visualizing the mandala, you know, it's the same. Uh, so same way. Uh, we remember the pure land and not just only remember the pure lands and you have to remember the qualities uh, you have to remember the you know beneficials all those uh, uh, quality uh, if you remember then you can you know uh, uh, when you're dying at that time you only remember the pure land and amitabha and that is connect your uh, consciousness to the amitabha's heart too and we reborn in the pure land so like we do the poor you know eject our consciousness to the amitabha's heart and do, die at the time of the death so same same this way when we die with the thought of amitabha we will definitely reborn in the amitabha pure land so that way first cause is remembering the pure land again and again and the second cause is uh, accumulation of a merit so uh, from the accumulation of a merit there's a seven different type of accumulation merit or another way said seven different way you can accumulate the merit so we talk about the first first is a uh, from the seven lamb offering first is a prostration we talk about so uh first is a, we're talking about the prostration uh prostration is a uh, there's a sorry mm, few uh, postrations. First is called the superior postration. Sorry, superior postration. Superior postration is a someone who see uh, in a nature. So called the raptawa jive cha in Tibetan, seeing the true nature. That is the same as a cha. In the in the in the uh, Kagyu tradition, we call the maha mudra. So that is a mudra. It's a come from wood. It's from chak. So <clears throat> this chak is a, also there's an another meaning. So uh, as there there's in the maha mudra also in the chakra samvara tantra said you know uh, chak ni tongbe rangshinlas which is mean that uh, uh, pay homage is mean the emptiness. So that is the superior uh, prostration or pay homage. Then uh, medium, mediocre, or some medium, medium, or middly as a, uh, you know, adapting the meditation. So something adapting. Meditation means the adapting something to adapting something, you know, familiarizing something. So that is uh, uh, when we're meditating on the loving kindness, compassion, meditating on the, for uh, what's called the impermanent, meditating on the deity, meditating on the Mahamudra, all those are uh, second, uh, what's called the me mediocre prostration or pay homage. Then a uh, lesser one is the devotion. So uh, from those three different type of prostration, here is mainly talking about the devotions, a base based on the devotions. Devotion mean you have to know the quality of something, you know, that particular deity's quality. So you have to uh, pay homage to, to that quality. So, so that way here, seven different type of quality expressing Buddha, Buddha Amitabhas. First one is if we already gone through the pay homage to the quality of the enlightened body, uh, 
activity of enlightened uh, body as a uh, as a manifestation from the body to manifest. And uh, 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 but the second one is the uh, heart uh, heart of compassion. Buddha uh, Amitabha's quality of the heart of compassion. And third one is it, um, his uh, strength and uh, uh, capacity. So quality of remembering the quality of the strength and capacity. So I think those we already, uh, we I think already gone through three uh, postulations. So today we go to uh, call the pay homage, uh, pay homage of remembering the uh, Buddha Amitabha's quality that uh, protecting from the untimely death. So sometimes we call the uh, Amitabha practice. So that one is here, uh, page seven, I think this text, page seven, it said, um, uh, for the length of your life, innumerable galpas. So, um, I mean, that was life. He later will see this one. He live many eons. You know, like they, they say, is a uh, one eon of this planet, one eon is a one day of Amitabha. I think down there come later. So, Buddha Amitabha live many eons. So that way, his. Uh, um, lifespan is a really uh, many eons, you will not pass into nirvana. This is nirvana is talking about the not going to pass, not going to die. I mean, ordinary. He is already nirvana, but he's not gone to the state of the, uh, you know, dharmakaya state without the manifestation. <laughs> you know, so, so I think uh, this is a polite way to say you will not die. Many eons, you will not die. This is, you abide uh, manifestly now. Oh, it's said that anyone who pray to you with a one-pointed devotion, even if their life is exhausted, unless that is a cause by the revenue of a karma. So, so here, even your lifespan is exhaust, still you can increase in lifespan by prayer to the Amitabha um, or Amitayu. Um, so that like a, uh, when Rechumba was visiting to Tibuba in India and Tibuba said, okay, today you should go to the market, someone really nice uh, market gathering some kind of festival, you should go to see uh, Indian festival before go back to Tibet. So Rejumba went and there's a yogi came. The yogi came and gazed into the Rejumba and said, you uh, seems a really great, um, you know, practitioner or great um, uh, accomplished one, uh, you know, uh, like something that's a really amazing one or special one. Too bad that you have only seven days to live. Your lifespan is only seven days. So then the regime uh, was really afraid and he rushed back to the Tibuba. And uh, Tibuba sent him to the one uh, Dagini who also met with the Pema Sambhava. So look how long she lives. Pema Sambhava came to Tibet eighth century. Rejumba went to India like 11 or 12th century. There's like many years different, but she lived that because she accomplishing the long life CD. So that's called the genoma, uh, what called, um, not genoma, sorry, Majitubekyam. Um, so that is what we have in the Dugung tradition. We do practice at the, uh, bestow him empowerment, teaching instruction, and resume by practice. So his lifespan is becoming double. Mm. So Rejumba lived like 80 some years. Um, and also, I, I mean, this may be not that important, but uh, uh, my mom told me when she was young, there's astrology based on your 
uh, you know, bird, you can see your, uh, through the astrology too, you can see your lifespan. So astrology said she, she her lifespan is a 60 years, but she lived almost 80 years. So I think that's incredible practice at the time. So that is not the relevant, but uh, I mean, not important, but uh, so, so there is a way to, you can increase your lifespan, even your, uh, you know, lifespan is exhaust, you can increase it. But different is here said, ripening of a karma. So this is a ripening of a karma mean, there's a three way to exhaust your lifespan. By karma, by uh, a lifespan and a merit. When all those three are exhausted, you know, merit, karma, and uh, lifespan. All three are exhausted. Even a Buddha Amida, you cannot protect you. But so, so, but if you just, you know, your number is only, your living number is only like 40 years, then you have a good marriage. Uh, uh, and, uh, uh, um, from then you practice the Buddha Amida, you then you have a good chance to increase in your lifespan. So that way, uh, not only prayer to the Amida, Amida you alone cannot increase in your lifespan, not, on, not only recitation of a mantra alone cannot increase in your lifespan. So you need the support of the good merit, good merit, uh, 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 recitation of a mantra. And a good car, when those three, then definitely increase your lifespan through the practice of the Amida Yu. So that way, uh, unless all three are exhausted, then uh, even Amida you cannot protect you. But as uh, 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 long as you have a karma and good merit, even your lifespan is exhausted, num number of lifespan is exhausted, still you can increase through the like practice of the Amidayu and those. So that way, um, uh, that is what mean this was. Uh, so that way we'll live hundred years, you will uh, uh, award all untimely death apostate to the protector Amidayu. So this is a um, untimely death mean also, sometimes because of that, you, even you have a lifespan, okay? Even you have lifespan, when your luck is a run out, merit is a run out, uh, you will die with a, some instant, like a car crash or some instant will cause you to death, you know? So, so in the astrology, sometimes can tell you lifespan is not finished. So, so that reason, sometimes kids born only live like a one month, one year, two years, only a few years and died. So that is a, because your previous lives, your lifespan is not finished. That way you born again and only live that long, then died. So those can happen, untimely death can happen. Even your lifespan is not over when you are not supported by the merit. You know, so it's you cannot be. Uh, it can be caused to the death by some kind of incident, some kind of accident. So those both are necessary. You know, all uh, necessary. Your uh, so 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 that way uh, from the uh, protect from the untimely death. So that is a, what is a postulation to the for the Amitayu. So here, why I didn't say Amitava? He said Amitayu. Amitayu are same Buddha. Bogakaya form, one is a Nirmanakaya form. Amitabha, what we normally see as a school called Amitabha is a Nirmanakaya form. That is a manifestation of the Sambhogakaya Ayu. So uh, Amitayu is a good ornament. Amitabha is a good ornament. But 
same one is a samboga kaya form one is a nirmana kaya form so that way uh, those two are same so the same is a, uh, uh, here even said amita you it means the same as talking about the buddha amitabha otherwise people may confuse oh how come we just talking about the amitabha's praise prostration to the amitabha now in the middle of here amita you you know uh, <laughs> Uh, <clears throat> okay now uh, number five uh, remembering the beneficial uh, beneficial of the being uh, doing prostration to the Amitabha so that the prostrating about I mean prostrating with the remembering the quality or beneficial of the prostration. So here, <clears throat> prostration, I think uh, in the Tibetan tradition, there are mainly two things, two prostration. Some people say the three post, three type of prostrations, uh, mixing with the one Indian one called the touching to the feet. In Tibet, we don't have that one. In India, touching to the feet, one prostration, and the second one is a touching you know, to the ground. Okay, that is a two prostration. In Tibet, we have two prostration as a the touching to the ground, five point of the body or full prostration, those two. Uh, I think I mentioned earlier, uh, the, so uh, the, I think uh, the touching to the ground or the our five uh, point of the body is a general prostration, uh, basically general prostration. Uh, as a uh, uh, you know common prostration, and full prostration is a mostly related to the vajrayana. And if you look the vajrayana, I'm sure you already know this one. Uh, um, prostration is the full prostration is a preliminary practice of the tumu meditation, specifically, partic particularly tumu meditation. As a uh, so 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 that reason I think full prostration is a morally related to the vajrayana uh, uh, practice, especially tumu practice. So uh, something like that. So here is a remembering the quality of the prostrations. Uh, um, it's a it's a said that there is a greater merit in hearing uh, the name Amitabha and Sukhavati. Uh, and joining one's palm with the faith, then in the feeling countless billion world realm with the jewel and giving them to the generosity. Uh, I uh, therefore I therefore posted to the Amitabha with the devotion. So here, in this this is what I said is a Amitabha Sutra said. In the Amitabha Sutra said, Buddha said. This is a more greater merit to hearing Buddha Amitabha's name and have a devotion than offering to a uh, jewel like a gold, silver, you know, all those jewels completely filled with the threefold of a universe, yeah, billion universe. So if you look the number way, billion universe, I mean, it's a huge offering, you know, so that should be great merit. But uh, here, no matter how much amount you offering, this is always a material offering. So accumulation of merit. But when you hearing Buddha Amitabha's name, not just only accumulation merit, you remember the Amitabha's wisdom, you remember the Amitabha's morality, you remember the Amitabha's heavenly, you remember the Amitabha's uh, uh, you know capacity. So it's always related to the Amitabha's name. So there is a more than accumulation of merit. So, uh, so that way, uh, hearing Amitabha's name with a devotion is a greater merit than, you know, um, 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 offering those great amount of uh, materials or uh, uh, or that devotion, your devotion is related to the ultimate nature. So that way there's a more like a deeper meaning of the, from that the devotion to the uh, Buddha Amitabha. Um, 
So is it related to the, I mean, the, uh, what called the ultimate nature? So, so this, those, those reason, uh, having sincere devotion toward to the Buddha Amitabha and joining your palm together, this is a, this is a part of the prostration, okay? So that reason to talk about is a greater merit than uh, just offering some materials, you know? Um, I think, so, so these reasons, if you compare to the materials quality, and uh, devotion of the Buddha Amitabha's quality is a huge difference. You know, devotion means you have to see their enlightened qualities. Uh, the first, Buddha Amitabha is inseparable of the Dharmakaya. Second, Buddha Amitabha is one of the most pure morality. You know, uh, th three or some Buddha, I mean, that was a, uh, what called the Samadhi, it's a really profound ocean like Samadhi. And Buddha, I mean, that was a clairvoyant or wisdom is a immeasurable. So, well, by hearing a name and having devotion alone can connect all those uh, qualities. So, that way, that one is a more greater with a just joint hand at the palm, at the heart, and having devotion to the Buddha, I mean, that I have a greater merit or uh, greater than offering all the different type of jewels and fill with the three, three, threefold universe, or it's called the three billion, one billion universe. So this is a one Nirmana Kaya Buddha's uh, uh, pure uh, feel of uh, benefit ascension beings. Uh, anyone who hearing Amitabha's name circling, giving rise to faith from the depth of their heart, even once, uh, once cannot be turned back from the path of awakening. So when we have a sincere, uh, you know, devotion to the Buddha Amitabha, from the bottom of our heart, not the potenting one, not like a, you know, just repeating something that just memorizing. So the bottom of your heart, depth from your heart, you know, sincerely, if you have a uh, um, Amitabha, then uh, uh, a devotion and you will, um, I think this this is a, why is it said not, um, uh, cannot be turned back. Cannot be turned back means that you will not fall down in the low realm or anything. This would look this way. When you have a sincere devotion to the Buddha Amitabha, you definitely will be born in the pure land of Sukhavati. Once you're born in the Sukhavati pure land, you are, uh, your lifespan will be lived many eons. Because of that, and you have a really uh, you know, great favorable condition to practice the Dharma, because that whole environment is related to the Dharma. And uh, pure land of the Sukhavati sentient being have a less afflicted emotion, especially one of the main source of a suffer suffering of samsara is a come from the attachment. I mean, the pure land, there's no attachment. So uh, even the name of the attachment does not exist. So, so, so those reasons have a great favorable condition to uh, what called the liberate from the, uh, permanently from the samsara. So that way it's saying it's not going to return back. It means that not going to go lower. Okay, so that was actually, that was the sixth subject called the, uh, uh, prostration with the remembering the devotions. Now, seven subject. This is a little bit complicated. Um, <laughs> so I don't know how to uh, explain. I will try. Okay. Seven one said, "Have you heard the name of the Buddha Amitabha?" So this is the uh, uh, you know uh, remembering prostration with the remembering the name of the Buddha Amitabha. Quality of the name of the Buddha Amitabha. So, having heard the name of uh, having heard the name of the Buddha Amitabha, until one reaches the essence of the awakening, the essence of the awakening means the complete Buddhahood. 
one will be uh, one will not be born as a woman without the power so this one is a <clears throat> i think uh, lots of things have to go back to the history i think um, especially uh, buddhism is a come from india uh, before the buddha there's no ordination uh, exists on the female ordination you know um, so buddha's time in you know, only start that one kind of like can say revolution or Buddha was a revolution that he gave equal to the male and the female. So that is showing us how women have, women's position uh, in, from that kind of a culture. I think this is not just only India, West too. I mean, the reason West, in the West, women get kind of equal pay, some area. Still, there is a huge discrimination. So this is like a human nature. Uh, who have a, have a power that become more authoritative. So, so male is a pow more powerful, like a human power, earlier power is related to the physical strength. So physically, most of the time, female, a male are more stronger than female. That way, that has become a power. But now it's a totally different. Now it's a mental strength is more powerful than physically. So, <clears throat> So time is changing, it's not the same. So that is talking about the earlier, you know? So female are less strength from the physically than male generally. So, so there's a kind of like a powerless. So when you don't have that much power, then your vows or is not on your hand, it's the other's hand. So, 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 so when you look those all circumstance and uh, uh, so that way have a less favorable condition to the practicing Dharma continually. I think society wise, culture wise, physically strength wise, and there's a lots of condition, female have a less favorable condition. But now I don't think so it's the same because the time change, situation change. So I don't know if this is relevant or not. But basically, talking about the uh, you not you will not going to born powerless human being. Powerless human being mean like uh, you have no your own power that you can make decision. You know you you can make your own decision. So because earlier most of the uh, decision is made by the men and the women are just have to follow. You know so that way is it talking about here now lots of women are you know, leader in the, you know, strong uh, countries, leader are women. Uh, so, so that way it's a power change now. Uh, and in, in Tibet, there's one particular regions, women, it's called the women's nations. Women are kind of uh, in charge of the whole uh, that region. So that way it's that in that area, then can say not going to born as a male because you don't have a power to make the, your own decisions. So something that is, a, you have to have your own power to make the decisions, you know? Uh, actually in this country now, it's, uh, actually men's power is losing. I saw many men, uh, before they get married, they really devoted to the Dharma. Now they give up the Dharma because they get married and his uh, partner, girlfriend or wife or whatever, doesn't like the Dharma. So he, he just followed to the heart, you know? So that is hard power make you to uh, become unfavorable to, unfavorable to practice the Dharma. So, so that is a talking about here. So not, not uh, like just generally not talking about the female as a discriminated because especially in the Vajrayana, if you, you discriminate on the woman and you become the, uh, a vow of a Vajrayana, if you look at the 14 root downfalls. Um, so, so you cannot discriminate that way. But uh, uh, this is a talking about the ability, capacity, and the power. So, so, so this, this reason uh, saying basically is a, you will not be born in the unfavorable condition of a, uh, um, You know, and also uh, if you look, look this way, in India called the male is called the Purush. Purush is not really talking about the gender male. It's a talking about the actually is mean talking about the capacity. Someone have a capacity. 
So, so same way as here, uh, who have a capacity that is the push, and who ha who has who are lack of capacity, who have lack of power, is called a uh, you know uh, I think you can say women, whatever. Um, so, so that way, say is it, uh, not going to be born in the where we are the text. Women with uh, with uh, without the powers. So one will be born in a good family. So here, what does a good family mean? Rigsambo, Tibetan called the Rigsambo. Good family here, it, it referent mean someone is a you know uh, ethical. Someone is a righteous. Someone is a have a good environment about being good person. That is what is good family mean. If you're born in the, the environment day or culturally, really vicious one, you know, or you're, then you're in the bad family. Why? Because it's become a really bad condition of uh, practicing Dharma. Because your environment is not really suitable to practice the Dharma. Like uh, you're born in the fisherman's son and your job is a fishing. And you said, oh, I have to fishing, but still I want to practice Dharma. Those two not work together. You were born in the family as a butcher and your job is a butchery. Then you said, oh, I want to, this cannot work those together. You know, so you have to have a good environment of a family. That is what does it mean that, uh, what does it mean that uh, born in the good family mean? Something is uh, suitable to continually practice the Dharma. Sorry, I have to use my phone to what call uh, internet. Then that's making noisy. So I never uh, in every birth one's morality will be pure. Apostate to the to the God of a, Amidaba. So, so here, point is a not born with a, a woman or good being good, a good family. Is it best? Every life rebirth, you will have a pure morality and a good, uh, you can say, um, a, a righteous livelihood. Uh, um, uh, ethical livelihood, uh, positive li livelihood, will have that kind of. So, so I think this is a. You have to look all the circumstance. So, point here saying is it you will be born, they have a, a place or uh, the environment or circumstance of your, including your body, have a more favorable to practice the Dharma. You know. So, so that, that is the main point. So other way I heard one Lama, when he was newly come in the West and he was teaching in the school of the Pure Land and when come this word and he said, you were not going to born to the women, you will be born in the male. He said after that, he never want to teach this text. Because it's become a really contradictory. So, so uh, I I have to try to make the smooth uh, to to because uh, this we have to go back to the old history and environment and uh, that environment and history is not necessarily work nowadays. You know, we may need to say opposite way. You need you may just say you may you may have to say you will not be going to born at the male power without the power and will born the good family you know something like that you may need to say at some point so I don't know so basically it's a longest is the here male and a female is a talking about the capacity talking about the independent talking about the field, talking about the uh, good environment to practice the dharma to that you can make your own decision. Then that is called the prush. That is called the male. That is whatever you can gentle name. So it's, I don't think so. It's really talking about the female as a, uh, you know, woman uh, as a uh, female. I'm, I'm not sure this one.
Okay, so that is the <clears throat> basically prostration. Now, second is a uh, offering. Offering is a uh, directly offering is also antidote of uh, our stinginess, uh, attachment. You know, so 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 that way, uh, um, uh, then being attached to the body, being attached to the wealth. Um, so we need to practice at the offering. Then the offering have a two kind of offering called the. Uh, if you look, look the, in our Lama Chaba, it said physically arrange and mentally visualize. So first we have to arrange physically whatever capacity in, in our, our whatever we can, you know, rich one can do some things that maybe poor one cannot do. But it doesn't mean the poor one's material is a less value than rich one's one. Or rich one can be offering to the very expensive uh, flower or fruit and whatever, and poor one maybe not going to cannot afford afford to, to a really expensive one, but still they can uh, can offering to the flower. When come to the offering flower, it's not going to have a, a price, not going to make the different of the result of the merit. You know, as a flower, doesn't matter you even your offering. It's a really cheap one, you know, inexpensive one. I mean, really inexpensive one. Long as you offering that's pure hardly, it become a bread offering. If you offering the flower, for example, flower, really expensive one, you know, export, uh, and a really expensive one, well decorated one. But if you offering with a attachment, offering with a ego. Uh, then it's not become a pure offering because there's the involvement of the negative emotion. Uh, so, so that reason I have to offer with a pure thought, you know, and doesn't matter which kind of, but sometimes people may think, oh, that means I just offering on the, you know, inexpensive one and I have good, good feeling. Even you can afford really expensive one. That means that your mind is corrupted with a stinginess then it be not become a pure offering. So, so material, pure material. So what is the pure material offering here said, I offer my body, possession and root of the virtue. So they are divided into three. Body, why are you we offering to the body, to the Buddha? Because when you look the material, you know, in, in, the, in, in our body is the most impure material. They are nothing pure from the, our human body. They are nothing, you know, uh, worse than those animals' body. Animal, when after their death, their part of the body can make medicine. And you can sell the part of the body really expensive. But human, you cannot sell any part of the body. You have to pay to get, uh, you know, get rid of your body. How much, exp how expensive funeral is, you know? Because your body nobody wants, including your family. Why? Because they have nothing to pure. So, so when we look this way, it's no point to the offering the body. Why is he said my body? Reason is why we have to offer our body is within the our uh, what called the um, wealth. Human is. Our body is the most valuable wealth for us. Our body is more valued than, than your all those about jewelry or anything. So that way, when their disaster, something comes, first, what we try to save is it our body. Then second, we try to save other valuable things. So when come to the ourselves, our body is the most valuable object. So teaching us, a, you know, that is show us a most attachment is on our body, more than your house, more than your car, more than your jewelry, more than your money, most attachment is on the body. So first you have to, you, uh, you, you have to practice this way to uh, give it the most valuable object as a offering. And uh, that is how, have to offer to the body. It's not about the, the body is pure or you know something useful. Doesn't matter. So that way we have to offer our, our body. Then second one she said possession. Possession means the anything. 
we arranging like offering, you know, water for the feed, feed, water for the drinking, flower, incense, lamb, perfume, you know, food, music, all those kind of offering we can arrange. So Adisha said, when you're arranging offerings, you know, you have to arrange that even your friend get jealous. Greater you can, you know, if you have. So uh, uh, if you don't have, you need, because of you don't have a material, you need offering. If you have material, I mean, you have a wealth, because of you have a wealth, you need offerings. Reason is a, why you don't have a material, why you don't have a money, why don't you don't have those? Because you didn't accumulate the merit in the past life. That way you're born in the poor. Now in this life, you have to accumulate the merit. So next life, you will not born the poor again. So that reason one. And uh, rich one, because you have the material, you must offer it. Reason is that you, are, you have this material wealth because of in past life, you did accumulate merit that way, you uh, have this one. If you're not offering this life, then you, you, know, you, you have no guarantee or next life you will have this kind of wealth. So that reason you have to offer. So if there's a nothing you can offer, even the offering of the a handful of dust can become a great offering. There's one story. One day, Buddha was walking on the street, go to, uh, uh, you know, begging food. So there's two kids playing on the, on the road, playing with the dirt. You know, they're making uh, uh, like some dirt, a palace, some dirt, a wealth, you know, gold, silver, whatever they make. This is, a, you know, our, uh, so they play like kind of like a, whatever, uh, you know, the kids. So then um, Buddha was walking and the, the kid so devoted, he wanted offering. So he said, this pick up dust. He think that is his wealth and he offered to the Buddha. So Buddha accept his offering, the dust in his begging bowl. And uh, the, that, but that boy is just too, too short. So his friend uh, sit down and he step on the boy's back and offering to the Buddha's begging bowl, he can reach. So then that, that is how um, later the boy who offered the dirt, dirt to the Buddha was born to the King Ashok. And the, uh, the other boy who support him, you know, uh, make the step uh, from his body became the, uh, the minister of the King Ashok. So it's some Tibetan, we said this story of uh, uh, Ashok is a uh, past life. He was a, this one boy who offering to the dust on the Buddha. So even offering to the Buddha does, you know, uh, it become a great uh, accumulation of merit. So whatever, according to the, our capacity, we have to arrange into the offerings. So if we are capable to can arrange a great offering, then, that means uh, we should arrange a good way, best way, our way. Because sometimes people have a no problem to spending like a $20, $30 in the restaurant for their eating, but they have a problem to spending for the $5 for offering. <laughs> so, so that is a wrong way to we, you know, using, it's called the misusing the wealth. So uh, uh, when come to the physically arranged, uh, uh, it should be arranged uh, whatever you can, you know. If you don't have anything, then you can say all the uh, east, sun and moon is the my candle. In the south, all the central forest is my incense. From the north, all the clash of the mountain are my food. So, uh, so this, this, those, uh, all, then all the, uh, you know, four river of the water. So in all, you know, each country have their own river. Those river are become an offering of the water. So, 
so even just potenting that way and uh, I mean visualizing this way, not potenting, sorry, uh, can become a great offering. Okay, then root of a virtue. Root of a virtue is, I think, mainly is a talk about the virtue without the uh, 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 interrupt by emotions. So uh, uh, preparation with the intention, with the you know positive intention and engaging with the purely, and there's a many things like a you know highest one is like generating bodhicitta training the bodhisattva conduct, meditation on the generation stage, completion stage, recitation of a mantra, and uh, 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 so so and so. Those are greater root of a virtue. The middle also you can say like protecting someone's life, you know, and uh, keeping some, some partial uh, morality some kind of like uh, and or in, in encouraging other to the um uh, you know dharma and uh, at least have us uh, you know at least have a good uh, uh pure altruistic motivation so that kind of a uh, merit without that disturbing with the that that sudden emotion can destroy destroy it so you you have to uh, offering them is called a dedication or offering. It's a, I think same. Uh, so so before because like a, for example, you you accumulated some merit, you did something good, but then some other condition you get angry. And when you get angry and uh, from that angry too can destroy that merit earlier you created. So before the um, um, you know uh, this you know, destroyed by some kind of uh, circumstance, you must over to that that, uh, that virtue. So this is wherever actually appearing, offering they are. So this is called the physically arranging uh, merit. Okay, so then the second one is called the uh, um, mentally visualize offering. So what is a mentally visualizing? As I said, mentally uh, emanated a special substance and sign, and the seven jewel, the pre-existing billion world with the, their uh, 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 billions seat of over as uh, of four uh, continent, Mount Meru and uh, Sun and Moon, and all the lecture of a deva naga and human uh, bring all this to my mind and offer them to the amitabha for the uh, for my benefit accept them throughout your compassions so this is a, a so offering mentally here said uh, 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 called a, uh, a special substance so there's a eight different special substance. Uh, those eight different beings offer uh, is the one called the sesame seed, or white sesame seed offered by the Buddha, uh, what called Vajapani to the Buddha. Buddha blessed the uh, special uh, substance. Uh, and uh, uh, one boy, you know, buffalo boy, he offered to the first Buddha to the Kushagras for the seed and Buddha blessed to the uh, auspicious substance. And uh, uh, the goddess of the earth, she offered Buddha, they called the Liti as a color and Buddha blessed. So they that kind of eight different substance. So that's called the uh, auspicious of a eight substance. Because these are eight uh, substance offering by the eight different uh, beings to the Buddha, and Buddha bless them. That way, called the eight substance. Then other one is called the eight sign. Sometimes we call the eight lucky sign. This one is a eight lucky sign are result of the Buddha's complete true accumulation to reach to the Buddhahood body. 
So Buddha's body is with this eight sign. Like a Buddha's crown, you know, Ushnish is like a umbrella. Buddha's uh, th throat, neck is like a vase. Buddha's, uh, you know, body itself is like more like a um, uh, uh, Victoria banner. And Buddha's hair and also, you know, navel and all those are clockwise, you know, uh, circle clockwise. So it's like a conscious with the clockwise. Uh, and uh, Buddha's eyes is a, like a, uh, uh, you know, a, a kind of like we call the fish a round one. So it's like that way, um, that is sign. And the Buddha palm and feet have a will. So, so that, that is, a, there's eight different type of a lucky sign. Is this a, uh, um, uh, Buddha's appearing in the Buddha's body of the, uh, what called the major and minor marks. So part of the major and minor marks. So, so that is the eight lucky sign is the, of the Buddha's uh, enlightened, you know, uh, enlightenment of the appearing in the body. So wherever those eight lucky sign, there's auspiciousness bring because of that eight lucky sign, because that is a kind of a, a sign of a meritory. I think uh, there's called a uh, endless knot as at the heart. So that way, I think uh, this Chinese culture, like uh, I think most of it is, is, is Asian Buddhism. They put the Buddha's heart, their swastika. I think that is a symbol of an endless knot. I think so. So in Tibetan, we don't have that one. But this is the same is all those eight legged like, sign appearing in the Buddha's, within the Buddha's body. So that way I call the S8 uh, lucky sign or eight, uh, uh, you know, um, yeah. Then seven jewel. So seven jewel is a uh, that is a also a result of this universal monarch, you know, precious well, precious bull, precious queen, precious minister, precious elephant, precious horse, uh, and so and so. They, those are uh, a result of that that marriage of the, those monarch. So 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 that way said. Now here, pre-existing billion worlds. Uh, so pre-existing brilliant one means that our universe is called the universal karma, created by the universal karma, or uh, our our planet is created by um, uh, uh, common karma. So that is pre-exist means that this quality of the, our planet is a since it's a, uh, you know uh, what called the built or since its appearance always that quality is there. Since start um, Chakwi Geba, I mean, the, I think becoming. Since it's a start becoming the, the universe, then uh, the, all those quality are that way called the is it, uh, our sun and moon. So this four continent, eight subcontinent. Come together, it's a have all together, you know, all the way here from the beginning to beginning to start the, this planet, they're all there. That way it's called the pre existing tree major, you know, some trees, May, maybe a house or a mountain reshape. So the highest one is becoming late, later is a really lower. Like uh, when our plane is a start, certain mountain are really high, but nowadays those are becoming really, they are nothing. And some there's a nothing now becoming like, like Himalaya, you know? So the, those are changing. So they are not pre-existent. But four continent, eight subcontinent, sun and moon, Mount Meru, and the certain things, they are pre-existent mean the from the beginning to they are there. So I think that's talking about. So, so this is like four continent, Mount Meru and sun and moon, all the luxury, then all the luxury, Deva, Naga and human, it means all the good quality. 
you know, the, all the richness, all the uh, uh, wealth. Of, you know, Gardwam, they have their own wealth. Naga have their own wealth. Human have their own wealth. All those of them. Yeah, uh, bringing all those to mind and offer them to Amitabha. So uh, now, um, this uh, mentally visualizing offering, I think I um, have to be skillful on this because uh, uh, those all materials, uh, those things is not only belong to you. If you offer to, they are offered to the, your own sake, it's you kind of stealing them. So you have to offer to the mother sentient beings sake. You know, the, the sentient being, like for example, you, you see that your neighbor have a really beautiful flower. Neighbor's garden have a really beautiful flower. You want to offer it to the Buddha, but you cannot offer it to the Buddha, even the mentally without their permission. If you offer to the Buddha without their permission from the mentally, it become like stealing. So what you do is a skillfully how to you offering is you offering for their sake. They are deluded, they are ignorant, they don't know how to offering those offering. So I'm going to help them to their accumulation merit. So that way I'm going to offer to the Buddha Amitabha for their sake, to, to, you know, the neighbor themselves sake. So then you are you offering and same time you're not stalling, you know. So see this is this reason you have to offering all those universes, sun, moon, uh, you know, uh, 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 um, all those eight substance, eight lucky signs, and those mentally, whatever is it, you have to offering with the all trusting motivation. Then you're not stealing, same time you can offering them. I think that there's a, some, some, some have to be, uh, you know, uh, distinguishing because uh, if you're offering them with a self center, then it's become like a stealing. So I think I have to be a little bit aware on that. Okay, now that is a uh, offering as a finish. Now third one is called the have to confess. What we're confessing is the non-virtue. So when we're confessing the non-virtue, that, that there's a non-virtue, have there's a sixth door. I think they call the sixth door of a non-virtue. So from those six door to we accumulate, accumulate the negative karma. So the, this called the door of time, door of a motivation, door of a source, door of a nature, and door of a uh, object, and door of a function. So, uh, so, so from those door, we, uh, you know, with the knowing, without knowing, we uh, accumulate the merit. Um, so, um, according to the Lamkhya uh, commentary, is that this, um, um, Confession, confess is the antidote of the aversions. I think because of the aversion, negative aversion is the one of the strongest emotion. So that way, confess is the antidote of the aversion. So because of this sixth uh, door, we accumulate the negative karma. So how we can get rid of them is uh, by the confessing, by the recognizing and confessing. So here said, uh, I confess, I confess all the wrongdoing, I and all being, my parent included, uh, have done throughout beginningless time up to now. So, uh, uh, so here first is uh, talking about the uh, uh, door of the time. I mean that our karma have no beginning. You know, when we uh, create, when we started making this negative karma, we, we don't have that beginning. So that was beginningless time. Uh, 
So here, basically said, I confess. Uh, Lord Atisha said, negative action have no good quality, but there is only one quality that you can purify it through the confess. There's a no non-virtue that you cannot purify it through the confess. You know, even the heinous crime can be purified through the confess. So what kind of confess is it? You need the for power, power of the relying, power of the remedy, power of the resolve, and power of the, uh, 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 you know, remorse. With this for power, uh, any any negative can can purify it. Why we can purify it, any negative with these four powers? Because our nature is not impure. Nature is pure. So that way called uh, we are uh, temporarily um, obscured by the defilement. So, so that reason, anyone, uh, any sentient beings, doesn't matter, uh, anyone, if we put the effort to purify it, anyone can purify them, you know, only different between the sentient being and in Buddha, is it? Buddha put the effort to purify it, that way he become a Buddha or she become a Buddha. Sentient beings, we didn't put the effort, that way we still stay stuck, same, we still remain in the samsara continually. Only that is different. So, so, so that way we have to confess. When we're confessing, we have to acknowledging the, our mistake. So, so, so uh, um, what, what is the door of a motivation essay? We, you know, we did those all negative, motivated by negative emotions. So that the reason I think here, these two role of the motivation and role of the uh, time will explain it. Is the time would you mean the beginningless time from the Purma Delhi? Uh, because we don't have a recollection of the when we start in the samsara. Samsara have no beginning. So that when beginning this time. And what is the motivated by we are doing the negative? What make us to do negative? Because nobody wants to be suffering. Nobody wants to be will, villain. Nobody wants to be a bad person. But it becomes bad because of the circumstance. So we don't want to do negative action, but it becomes a negative action because our mind mind control. What kind of mind control us to become a negative is it? Three poisons, attachment, aversion, and hatred. I will explain later uh, related to that one, to, to three, three negative emotions. We engaging the negative. So because of that reason and uh, uh, here, so here we said, uh, my parents, so here parents is not talking about the only this life's parents. And, but if we put the parent first, it's easier to include the every sentient beings, you know? So basically talking about the closest one, because when come to the parent, you feel like that's your responsibility of taking care of them, purifying them, you know? But when come to the other sentient beings, you stranger, you don't feel like you have a responsibility. So that way, Pama, then slowly, slowly bring you every sentient beings because you have to recognize this life's parent in a similar way other sentient beings have done, have been your parent in the other lifetimes. So, so then we recognize it. Uh, so, so slowly, slowly, then it become a feel like a, we have responsibility over every sentient beings, you know. Uh, so that have to grow our, our, uh, our, we have to come out the growth. Uh, so so the, the, those are, we have to uh, compare. Okay, so now uh, what kind of a, uh, uh, you know, it's called the source of a, a door, I say, with our body, speech, mind, we 
uh, creating negative. So from the body said, such as a killing, stealing, and uh, uh, fornication, I don't know, sexual misconduct, I think. I admit and confess at the three uh, wrongdoing of the body. So, so we have to confess of the, uh, 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 these three. So door of a, uh, uh, what call this, uh, motivated by the um, afflictive emotion, we engaging to the like a killing, for example. Basically, generally killing is motivated by the afflictive emotion of aversion. Uh, and uh, stealing is uh, motivated by the attachment and uh, uh, fornication or uh, uh, sexual misconduct is uh, motivated by the attachment. But also subdivision, like for example, killing. You have a killing by the motivated by the attachment, kill motivated by the aversion, kill motivated by the ignorance. So like someone kill for the food, you know, hunting. It's so motivated by the attachment. Kill from the motivated, the abortion is like a, uh, you know, a soldier killing the enemy in the war. You know, it's so nothing you have to do except anger, the hatred. And kill motivated by the ignorance is a sudden religion. They do the sacrifice, animal sacrifice, you know, killing the animals. It's an ignorance because they think that is the uh, doing pure, some kind of pure contact or some kind of good things, you know, by killing. Uh, there's a Buddha's life story. When Buddha was a little and uh, every year they do ritual for his health, his health sake. So those, uh, uh, those uh, you know, um, religion uh, leader, they gather one place and there's, a, there's some animal bring to them and they're going to kill that animal to uh, sake of Buddha's uh, health. At that time, Buddha was really little. And Buddha said, why you do this one? He asked, you know, Siddhartha asked him, oh, this is, um, we do it for your sake. So by killing this innocent, how become my sake? Is that what kind of benefit forget for me? And he asked the priest, you know, I'm sure you care about me, you know, um, and uh, you really want me to be uh, everything best for me. So he priest said, of course, I, you know, uh, I do anything, even uh, risk of my life, I will do anything for you. And said, okay, then let, let put yourself on the position of the sacrifice and, you know, I kill yourself to, to offering this. So he couldn't do that one. So, so that way Buddha said, by killing one innocent, not going to benefit for me. You know, so he makes that time Buddha was like a really little boy. So, so that kind of uh, sometimes ignoring cause us to do stupid things that we think that is a part of the ritual, part of the religion, part of the, you know, marriage, good deed. So, so, so that reason there's a there's a many different way we do the uh, uh, killing, you know, and uh, stealing means that some people have a habit of stealing, some people have a, a necessity, some people because you have yourself but you want more, you you want. Uh, so 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 that reason then uh, I, I don't know this I never saw this one fornication fornication I don't know this one I, I think it's called the uh, sexual misconduct you know I think this is the same as a sexual misconduct so these three are admit by the physical body so we have to confess uh, in the Tibetan, it's called the Tol Sha. Tol one means that you have to uh, tell to someone, front of someone, front of Buddhasadov, front of Guru. You, you. Uh, by telling, 
confess and three wrong doing of my body. So it's all are the wrong. Why? Because by those action of those three, it not bring benefit for you, it not bring benefit to anyone else except sub making creating the bad karma to settle. So that way we happy is called the wrong doing, you know. Uh, even if it's a temporarily, it, it may get benefit, but uh, later it become a cause to, uh, you know, suffering. So that way it's called a wrong doing. And anything is a bring the result as a negative, it's become a wrong doing. Why? Because it's nothing benefit for us. I think that is a non-virtue and a virtue is a, uh, uh, based on the what kind of a, uh, consequence I can get. Oh, we are past 11. Sorry, I didn't notice it. So we have to confess that one. So maybe we stop here today. Okay, thank you so much. So next week I have some retreat here. So there's no uh, this class at the Amitabha, but a week after, uh, I think um, June 7, I think. So see you then. Um, but we have from Saturday to uh, until next Sunday, we have some program and uh, some are, uh, uh, you can join if your time. This is so I put on the on post, uh, post there. Okay, thank you so much, uh, Ms. Long and Adulty, both of you. Chan joy sem joy rem boy che ma je ba na je joy che ke ba nyam ba mem ba kon e kon do pe wo so ta dan kon de tham je Okay, thank you everyone.